So all these should be kind of review. Uh, I do want to talk about when you square a binomial. Uh, all right, so I mean, you can write it out as x minus 3 times x minus 3 and multiply it out, but to be honest, that's going to take way too long for what I need you to do today. I need everybody to look at this and instantly write down the answer. So if that's what I want you to do, I should probably tell you how I think about it. Uh, whenever you square a binomial, you're going to get three terms every time. So, and let's talk about what those three terms are. The first term's easy, you just square this. The last term's easy, you just square this and it's always positive. How do you get the middle term? You multiply these together and double it. So I'll get negative three x times two gives me a minus six x, and we're done. Same thing over here, this is gonna give me x squared, I get a plus 10 x, and I get a plus 25. And a little bit of review of yesterday as far as simplifying square roots. 48, that was one of the square roots that I said you, you just kind of know, need to know it because it's going to show up. Think of that as 16 times 3, so this is going to give me 4 square roots of 3. When you take the square root of a negative number, you're guaranteed to have an i in your answer. Uh, so in your mind, you can say, well, you know, deal with what's the square root of 24 and just make sure I stick an i in the answer. When I take the square root of 24, that's going to give us 4 times 6. So that's going to give me square root of 4, square root of 6. That's going to give me a 2 square root of 6. Now there's the issue of where do you stick the i? Because if you take a square root of negative, you've got to stick an i. To be honest, it doesn't technically matter. There's three places you could put it. You could put it here, you could put it here, you could put it here. right? And all of them are correct. The problem with putting the i at the end of the square root is sometimes you get sloppy and you take the square root of i and that's, that's a, you don't know how to do that yet, right? And also you're not really taking the square root of i. So how do you avoid that? Well, you put the i in front of the square root. Um, and you can put it here, but that looks kind of funny. So the, anytime you have like a number in a square root and an i, if you look up your answer in the back of the book, they put the i in the middle. Now, if you put it in front, I'm not going to mark it wrong, because it's still correct, right? Uh, I'm just saying this is sort of the standard formatting of where do you stick the eye. All right, so, you know, I needed to talk about squaring some things. Uh, I want to talk about, make, just kind of review about simplifying square roots. So, what are we doing today? Well, it's kind of what we do in all algebra stuff. I can talk about a bunch of random topics, but at some point, we have to solve equations. So, let's solve some equations. So if I give you x minus 6 squared is equal to 31. So we need to talk about solving this equation. Now, for the most part, when you solve equations, your job is to get x by itself. And if I look at this, well, I've got a single x term, so I need to get x by itself. So, now, what are we going to what are we going to do to like, what are we going to do to get the x by itself? Like, I've got I've got two things with it. I've got a minus six and a square. And if I want to get x by itself, the thing that's furthest away from the x, that's what I want to get rid of. So, right. so what am I going to do first? Square. Take the square root, get rid of the square. So if you take the square root, you know, whatever you do on one side, you've got to do the other. So that's going to give me x minus 6 equals, and then I have the square root of 31. Um, in solving square roots, anytime you take the square root of both sides, you have to put plus or minus. I think I talked about that about a week ago when we were solving with the difference of squares. And at this point, your job is to get x by itself. So to get x by itself, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. So that's going to give me x is equal to 6 plus or minus the square root of 31. And believe it or not, that's how I want your answer. Um, this technically represents 6 plus the square root of 31 and then 6 minus the square root of 31. But for, for, my, for, for our practical purposes, you can, just, you can leave it 6 plus or minus square root of 31. Notice you do get two answers. If you were to type this in your calculator, you would get ugly decimals. I really don't care about the ugly decimals. I want your answers in terms of square roots. 
All right? So, your turn. What if I gave you x plus 2 squared is equal to 8? Right? I want you to got to simplify the square root of 8, so that's going to give us 2 square roots of 2. We're not done. I need to get x by itself, so I subtract 2 from both sides. I get x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 2 square roots of 2, and there's your answer. Right. Now, if you had to get a decimal answer, obviously you could do negative 2 plus 2 square roots of 2 and negative 2 minus square roots of 2 is 2. But for the most part, this is what I want. And while we're at it, let's do one more of these. So what if I gave you x minus 4 squared is equal to a negative 20? Solve this. And again, you're doing the exact same thing. So if I take the square root of both sides, that's going to give me x minus 4. Square root of 20, negative 20. We know it's got an i. 20 is 5, 4 times 5, so I end up with 2 square root of 5. There's an i in the middle. I'm sorry, also a plus or minus, because anytime you take the square root, you got to put plus or minus. So now when you solve, we're going to get x is equal to 4 plus or minus 2i square root of 5. So what I'm hoping is with these three problems, you look at it and you say, well, I'm doing the exact same thing each time, and this is pretty easy. All right. So as far as solving this type of quest equation, it's not bad, right? Because anytime you get something squared equals a number, you just take the square root. You know how to handle it if, you know, you know how to handle it if you have to square root of a negative, because we talked about yesterday with i. And even if it's not a nice square root, you can do this. Okay, that's a skill I need to make sure you have. All right, the next thing I need to talk about, and that's actually the topic of the day, and the topic of today is something called completing the square. All right, and uh, if you've seen this before, they usually talk about solving by completing the square. Um, Completing a square shows up in a ton of different topics in math, and if this is the first time that you've 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 uh, thought about it, that's you know that's fine. It will not be the last. So, what is completing the square? Well, that warm up that I gave you, x minus three squared, uh, that, that first problem I gave you, this is a perfect square. The reason it's a perfect square is well, duh, right? It's squared, right? When you multiplied it out and you got x squared minus 6x plus 9, that is a perfect square. You know why this is a perfect square? Because it can be written as something quantity squared. All right? So when we talk about things being a perfect square, or sometimes just a square, it means it's either obviously a perfect square or it can be written as a perfect square. All right? So, what is this idea of completing the square? Well, the idea of completing a square is I'm going to give you something, say x squared plus 10x. Right? So I'm going to write x squared plus 10x. This is not a perfect square because it can't be written as a perfect square. Right? So this is not, this is not a perfect square because, I mean, we can't write it. it. It's missing something. Because if you think about Remember, like if I want three terms, if I have an x squared, an x, and a number, if that number is what it needs to be, then I can write it as a perfect square. And so this idea of completing the square is our job is to figure out what goes here so this can be written as a perfect square. Right? That's our job. Right? And so how do we do it? Well, how we do this is we look for some patterns. So, all about some patterns. So let's let's look at some patterns for a second. And if I give you x minus 6 squared, okay, that's going to be three terms, right? Let's see, our first term is x squared, the, uh, the last term is 36, and this term is a minus 12x. I, don't need, I didn't need to write that as small as I did. Okay? 
Now, what's interesting about all this is that all three of these numbers are related. What's the relationship between this number and this number? It's multiplied by two. Multiplied by two. What's the relationship between this number and this number? It's squared, right? Does everybody see that? So, like, even though they're three different numbers, they're all related, right? So if you knew one, you could find it. Like, if I give you this one, it's pretty easy to find the other two, isn't it? Like, if I just gave you another one, I said, all right, well, what's x plus 8 squared? Well, let's see, we're going to get x squared plus 16x plus 64, because we double it, right? And then we square it, right? So now let's go back here. What if I only give you one of the numbers, right? Well, the key to doing this is you've got to figure out what goes here. You know, if that's an x, that's pretty easy. We get an x here. Now, if you double it to get from here to here, what do you think this number is going to be? 5. A 5, right? Because if you double it, right, to go from back here to here, so we're going to make this, and it's going to be a positive 5. And if this is a 5, what's this have to be? 25. 25. Guess what? We just completed the square, right? See, what I gave you originally was an incomplete square. It didn't have that third term. So to complete the square, we needed to add this number. And how you found that number is you said, well, if I have this, I can figure this part out. And once I know this part, then I can, then I can figure this number. So let's try it again. Let's say I give you x squared uh, minus... Eight x. Okay. So if it's x squared minus eight x, you think about it and you think, all right. The first thing you need to think about is what goes here. There's always going to be an x. What number has to go here? Negative 4, right? We take half of it, so we get negative 4. And once you know this number, it's easy to find this number because we just take this number and square it and get a plus 16, right? Everybody okay with completing the square? Well, so that's, it. that's when you have nice numbers. Um, what if you don't have nice numbers? What if I gave you x squared plus 3x, and I said complete the square, right? Obviously not a nice number, right? Because it, you know, So what do you do if it's not a nice number? The answer, the exact same thing. We're going to go through, and we're going to put an x, and you think, well, what's half of 3? 3 over 2. Keep it as a fraction. You don't want to get to decimals because squaring decimals in your heads can get very confusing, right? But if you think, well, what's half of 3 over 2? Well, okay, that's going to be, what's half of 3 is 3 over 2. And I, the reason I say take, use a fraction is I'll guarantee everybody can square 3 over 2. I don't know if I can guarantee that everybody can square 1.5. Because whatever goes here, you have to square. And when you square that, you get a plus 9 over 4. Guess what? You just completed the square. Right? And you notice we're doing the exact same thing, aren't we? Like whatever's here, we take half of it, stick it here, find this number squared, stick it here. All right? Okay, so that's an example of you know, one thing that's not nice. What if it was x squared plus 3 over 5x? Everybody written it down. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, right? We're going to stick, okay, we're going to put an x here. We're going to take half of that, right? Right? Like everything hinges on taking half of this. And so how do you take half of something? Well, you know what? What if I just wrote it out? Like, 
you know, I wanted to take half of 3, so I divided it by 2. I want to take half, if I just wrote out half of 3 fifths, and we translated it. Half is that. Of means multiply, and then 3 fifths is 3 fifths, right? And so what's half of 3 fifths? 3 tenths. Oh, okay. So I'll make that as 3 over 10, right? So we take half of that, right? Square this and stick it here. That's going to give me 9 over 100. And now we've completed our square. Is everybody okay with right, this idea of completing square? And I've pretty much just given you all the... I mean, this is, about, this is as tricky as it gets. It doesn't get any trickier than the number in front of x happens to be a fraction. And so, well, we're, you know, it, we, how do you take half of a fraction? Here's the secret. You multiply the denominator by 2. Why? Because if you take half of something, you multiply your denominator by 2. All right? All right. So this is the, this is the act of completing the square. So what does that mean? Right? OK, we haven't solved an equation yet. Right? Well, we solved some original original. Oh, and actually, I want, you, I want to do one more. But we're going to be a little weird because I'm crazy. If I give you x squared minus 5 over 6x. So here's what I want everyone to do. I want you to write the x squared minus 5 over 6x. But instead of writing the parentheses squared off to the left, I want you to do it below. And the reason is your teacher is just crazy. All right? So now to compute this, we're going to put an x, take half of this, well it's a minus, so we get negative, and then of course I have to multiply the bottom by 2, that's going to give me 5 over 12. And then I'm going to square this, and that's going to give me 25 over 144, and now I've completed the square. And you're thinking, wait a minute, why are we writing this below here? And the reason is, your teacher's just crazy. right? You're doing the exact same procedure. I'm just asking you to write it below. All right? Oh, good. I just did the hard part of the day. This is the hard part of the day, right? Everything else I'm about to do, you already know how to. I'm just going to combine things together. I'm going to combine this with something that I've done earlier in the class period. So. Now that I've gotten the basic skills out of the way, I can do what I was what I was trying to what I, I can do what I was trying to teach today. So the first thing, we are going to solve equations, and the first equation is going to be x squared minus 12x plus 5 is equal to 0. So everybody write that down. And actually, I need to write it. So I have x squared minus 12x plus 5 is equal to 0. Is it plus 5 or minus 5? Yeah, plus 5. And our job is to solve this. Now, the only way we know how to solve this up until now is you factor it, like set it equal to 0, and hope it factors. Right? That's the only way we know how to solve quadratics up until this point. Well, guess what? It doesn't factor. So if it doesn't factor, what do you do? Well, we're going to change the way it looks. As our job is, in this case, we're actually going to get x by itself. So to get x by itself, you know, you've got a problem. You've got an x squared and an x. Like You could try to move this stuff over and take the square root of both sides, but you haven't got an x by itself. Right? When I say x by itself, you have a single x on the left-hand side, and that's the only place you see an x. And you can't just move this over. Although on tests and quizzes, people will try. You can't do it. Anytime you have an x squared and x, you just can't move this part over and take the square root. It doesn't work that way. So we need to change the way it looks. And so, I mean, if you already know how to do this, then I'm boring, the, I'm boring you to tears, and that's fine. If you don't know how to do this, here's what I want you to do. What I want everyone to do is I want the letters on the left 
and the number on the right. So when you write this, you say, well, I can't deal with this number, so I'm just going to move it to the other side. So I'm going to write this as x squared minus 12x. I'm going to leave a space because my math teacher's crazy is equal to negative 5. All right, I'm going to give everybody a chance to write this. If this is the first time you've ever seen this, you need to write this. If you don't write this down, I'll guarantee you're not going to get it. All right, now, what we're going to do with these letters on the left, we're going to complete the square. And when I complete the square, I want this left-hand side to look like something quantity squared. So to complete the square, if this is an x squared minus 12x, what do you think is going to go here? X minus, like, remember, take half of that, right? So I get an x minus 6, right? Isn't right. that what we were doing? When I say complete the square, I want this to be a perfect square. So if I want this to be a perfect square, then right below it, we take x and we take half of that, right? Now, if this is a minus 6, what has to go here? A plus 36, right? So I'm going to put a plus 36. Now, I've changed the problem. See, what I have in purple, right? right you just can't go add a 36 to one side of the equation, right? You've changed, the, you've changed the problem, haven't you? Well, if you add a 36 to one side, guess what you have to do? Add a 36 to the other, because you've got, otherwise, like whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. So I'm going to add a 36 to this side. And, and so now this gives me negative 5 plus 36, which is 31. And now, oh wait, this looks like a problem I made you do earlier, doesn't it? Actually, it doesn't look like a problem that I made you do earlier. It is a problem I had you do earlier. So what do we do? Take the square root of both sides. That's going to give me x minus 6 is equal to plus or minus square root of 31. And we end up with x is equal to 6 plus or minus the square root of 31. All right. Your turn. All right, so I want you to do x squared plus 4x minus 4 is equal to 0. You do the exact same thing you did over here. Uh, you got an x squared and x. Uh, move that number over here. We can't deal with it. So that's going to give me x squared plus 4x equals 4. Now we're going to complete the square, so I put little parentheses down here, and there's something squared. I've got to figure out what goes here. Half of that, so it's going to give me a plus, four, a plus 2. Square that, add it up here. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And so that gives me an 8. And now, that looks something like what we did before, doesn't it? Oh, well, actually, it looks exactly like something we did before. So I take the square root of both sides. So that's going to give me x plus 2 is equal to plus or minus. And square of 8 is 2 square roots of 2. No so x equals negative 2 plus or minus 2 square roots of 2. And I'm glad we got the exact same answer that we did before. Because if we didn't, we'd have a problem. All right. All right, so one more random problem. Yeah, it has absolutely nothing to do with anything else we've done. So I want you to solve uh, x squared minus 8x plus 36 is equal to 0. And so let's see, we go through. OK, we're going to do this the same way we did the others. I can't deal with the numbers, so I stick it over here. x squared minus 8x equals negative 36. Complete the square, let's see, half of that's going to give me a negative 4 squared. Square that, so I put a plus 16. Whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other. It's going to give me negative 20, and now that looks exactly like that third problem I made you do. Then we take the square root of both sides. And so it gives me x minus 4 is equal to plus or minus. That ends up giving 2i square root of 5. And so x is equal to 4 plus or minus 2i square root of 5. 
All right, so um, that's nice and all, right? But, you know, what happens You know, if it doesn't look nice, they, so these, I don't know if you noticed, but these three problems kind of work exactly the same way, right? I mean, we had a few things that were a little different. Um, what if it looks like this? What if I give you 5x squared minus 6x plus 8 is equal to 0? So I want everybody to write that down, and then I have a very, very important thing that I need to say once you write this down. Okay? Okay, everybody ready? This is very important. I can get your attention. I don't know about the people <laughs> virtually, right? I don't know if I can get your attention, but if somehow you can pay attention for this little bit, this is going to help you. All right, here's the thing. You cannot complete the square with a number in front of the x. I'm going to say that again. You cannot complete the square if there's a number in front of the x. All right? I don't know if you noticed, but the previous three examples, there was you know, a 1 in front of the x squared, right? If long as there's a 1 in front of the x squared, you can complete the square. You cannot complete the square with it looking like this. So then the next question is, well, what do you do? Well, you make it a 1. How do you make it a 1? We're going to divide everything by 5, because that's what you're allowed to do. And so that gives me x squared minus 6 over 5x plus 8 over 5 is equal to 0. Now, I have a 1 in front, so now I can complete the square. Right? So how does that work? Well, let's see. I'm going to do this, and then I think, oh, well, actually, just kidding. Oh, shoot, I'm going to run out of room. i got to move that number over. Right? i got to do x squared minus 6 over 5x equals a negative 8 over 5. So, Complete the square, x minus, what's going to go there? You could do 3 over 5. Believe it or not, actually, I'll make it either. Okay, we'll do that. Okay. So I take half of that. That's going to give me a 3 over 5. That's a 3. And if a 3 over 5 goes here, what goes here? 9 over 25. And if you add a 9 over 25 to this side, you've got to add a 9 over 25 to this side. And this is where everybody kind of hates it. Sorry, you've you, you, you got to get a common denominator. No way to avoid it, but it's not terrible. Uh, we're going to multiply this by 5. And I usually just kind of do some scratch work off to the side. Because this gives me negative 40 over 25 plus 9 over 25. And so that gives me negative 31 over 25. And now you treat it just like the other problems. Uh, we're going to take the square root of both sides. And so that can be x minus 3 over 5 equals plus or minus. And when you take the square root of a fraction, it's the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. Uh, square root of the bottom is just 5, so that's fine. Square root of the top, uh, square root of negative 31, is just going to be i times the square root of 31. There's a negative, so I've got an i involved. And to write down my final answer, I'm going to add three-fifths to both sides, so this is going to give me x is equal to 3 over 5 plus or minus i squared of 31 over 5. And to be honest, that's as ugly as it ever gets. Right? 
your turn. What if I give you 2x squared plus x equals 6? And then talk about your homework. All right, well, I already put the number over. So I'm going to divide everything by 2. That's going to give me x squared plus 1 over 2x is equal to 3. Now I want to get a common denominator. We get, now I'm going to complete the square. So it's going to give me an x plus half of that's going to give me 1 fourth. When I square that, it's going to give me plus 1 over 16. And whatever Good morning, I do to one side. Students. In a couple of minutes, first period will be ending. Okay. Teachers, you will release the first half of your students. Students, as you are dismissed, please remember to wear and your mask, remain socially distant, and follow be the quiet and killing my. I only have 45 minutes. The right sides of the hallway. 3 over 1 is the exact same thing as 48 over 16. So this is going to give me 49 over 16. By your teacher. Again, when the bell rings, release the first half of your class. Thank you. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. That's going to give me x plus 1 fourth is equal to plus or minus. Oh, look, I get 7 over 4. I get a nice, you know, sometimes when you complete the square, you get a nice answer. So this gives me x equals negative 1 fourth plus or minus 7 over 4. Whenever you have a nice answer, I expect both answers. Meaning, I want negative 1 fourth plus 7 over 4, and I want negative 1 fourth minus 7 over 4. And so this is going to give me 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2. This is going to give me negative 8 over 4, which gives me a negative 2. So we get this answer and this answer. All right, so your homework.